Hey there, YouTube, and welcome back to Utility Sports Channel here. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what Giannis Antetokounmpo said in a couple of different interviews. Uh, obviously, uh, he's got quite a big decision looming in front of him, can sign his NBA uh, Supermax extension with the Milwaukee Bucks prior to December 22nd. Once the season starts, however, he cannot sign that contract until the following offseason. So now we're looking at a lot of pressure, uh, both on him and the Milwaukee Bucks to really make a decision. Uh, obviously, the Milwaukee Bucks want him back. They were aggressive, went to get Drew Holiday, uh, paid a lot to get him. Also had a sign and trade in place for Bogdan Bogdanovich. That fell through. Uh, and now, at this point, they're working on uh, trying to bring Giannis back. Obviously, something uh, they've, I'm sure that they've offered him that contract. He has yet to sign it. Uh, and now, at this point, the clock is ticking. We're three weeks away exactly. And today, he comes out and says this. If LeBron, Kevin Durant, or Anthony Davis want to join me in Milwaukee, I will be happy. I don't care about being number one or number two or even number three. So looking at that, you know, that might sound like a good sign for the Milwaukee Bucks fans. You know, he said, join me in Milwaukee. Uh, but let's go on to the next quote here by him. Giannis Antetokounmpo, again, on Cosmo TV. LeBron is, of course, a great opponent, and I want to beat him, and he is the best player in the world right now. It doesn't matter who is the MVP. He is the best. I say so. He is the best in the world. And on to the next one. He said, MVP, I would vote for LeBron first, Luka after. LeBron brings out my most competitive self. He has been in this business for 17 years, and you have never heard anything bad about LeBron. He does his job. Next, he says, I will never be mad if I lose an MVP award. Seven years ago, I was playing in the second division. Come on, man, I was playing in Philatikos. Uh, how can I lose my mind I'm not getting an, if I'm not getting an MVP? And then he also later on went on to say, I want to improve my numbers on the three-point shot. I want to improve my free throw percentage. I will play more on the perimeter this season. I've worked hard uh, and believe in myself, and the results will come. And then he also says, I will not stop playing until I get what I want to achieve. I want to win a, a medal with the Greek national team. I also want to win an NBA championship. I may continue until I'm 45. I have to improve my shooting ability, my free throws, and that will happen. And that's kind of what we're looking at here uh, with Giannis. You know, uh, obviously some pretty big important things, especially uh, this first one right here. If LeBron, KD, or AD want to join me in Milwaukee, I will be happy. I don't care about being number one, number two, or number three. And to me, that is a worrying sign, uh, actually, for the Milwaukee Bucks fans and the Milwaukee Bucks. You see here, he mentioned three of what we would say would be for sure top ten players in the world. Uh, many would say top five players in the world. And he named those guys as people he wants to have joined him in Milwaukee. Uh, and two of them are Los Angeles Lakers. And quite frankly, none of these players are joining him in Milwaukee. Kevin Durant is under contract with the Brooklyn Nets, has yet to even play a game with them. There's no way they're looking to move him already. And AD is obviously still a free agent, but Milwaukee has no route of getting him. He's going to return to Los Angeles. Uh, and LeBron is inked with LA again yet for another year. And I don't think he's going to Milwaukee either. I think he's going to spend the rest of his career in Los Angeles. Uh, so now you're looking at Giannis, who could be a free agent next season, mentioning two Lakers players he would love to play with. Not, and he says he doesn't care if he's number one or number two or number three, obviously. Uh, it hard, it'd be hard to see him not being the third best player on a team, uh, at least, uh, anywhere he goes. But in L.A., he could be possibly teammates with LeBron and Anthony Davis. And he could also find a way to end up being a Brooklyn Net to play with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. That's something to watch. That would be a scary lineup. And I think Milwaukee Bucks fans should be worried. I, you know, he doesn't mention here that he was looking forward to Drew Holiday joining him. Obviously, we knew that Bogdan Bogdanovich was a guy he wanted to have on his team. The Bucs could not get that done with the Sacramento Kings, could not figure out a pathway to land him. Obviously, that kind of ended up being a, a dumpster fire with the way that whole uh, situation worked out. The NBA is currently investigating them. And now you're looking at Giannis, uh, who is eligible to sign that Supermax extension, $228 million over five years, still has not done that. And now I don't want to rule him out returning to Milwaukee. But quotes like this and the fact that he has yet to sign his Supermax extension should be worrisome signs for Milwaukee Bucks fans. The other thing I want to point out here is he mentioned uh, LeBron again multiple times and then also Luka Doncic. Dallas is a team that he has been uh, very vocal about actually in the past. He mentioned the dynam dynamism of Luka Doncic with Chris Porzingis. 
uh, the wonderful pick and pop game that they have and also their use of a role man. That's something uh, that Rick Carlisle features often in his offenses, has gotten a lot out of players like that in the past, White Powell. Uh, obviously, we even got uh, something out of solid measure for a little bit. Uh, you're looking at a, a team and a system that Giannis would be able to go into with salary cap space. Basically, it would take them moving the contract uh, of a player. Um, they well, actually, actually, at this point, they wouldn't even have to really move anyone because they moved Seth Curry already, which is the contract they would have had to move. So now you're looking at Dallas having the ability to bring them, bring him in before Luca signs a supermax extension, and you could look at a big three of Luca, Kristaps Porzingis, and Giannis Antetokounmpo for years to come. The Los Angeles Lakers also have a pathway to open up money to bring him in. It would take a LeBron opt out, which uh, he does have an option actually next off season, and an Anthony Davis opt out possibly could happen if he signs a one plus one this year. That could be something to watch, and also. The Los Angeles Clippers are another team that have a pathway. Obviously, they have a little bit less to do with his quotes here, so I'm not going to go too deep into it, but they do have a pathway. The Miami Heat is a team we've talked about on the channel. We'll have a video right here about Bam Adebayo's extension, uh, some of the issues with that. Also, uh, there's some positives. They got Bam Adebayo long-term. He's a really good player, uh, but it makes their pathway to Giannis a lot more difficult. Uh, Toronto Raptors are a team, uh, although I don't really love the fit as much offensively. I think defensively they would be incredible. Uh, but offensively, I don't really love that fit. Uh, but there's a lot of different teams that are vying. Maybe now the Brooklyn Nets, they have the assets. Maybe they're going to try and make a run at Giannis. Obviously, a sign and trade there could make some sense. I do think Giannis will finish the season with the Milwaukee Bucks. I'm not saying that they're going to trade him or anything crazy like that. And I wouldn't even be completely surprised if he re-signed there in the offseason. I would not be. He seems like a loyal player. He seems like a guy who values family, values community, and all that. So I think Milwaukee giving him the shot out of Greece is something that will be valuable to him. I also think Atlanta could be a dark horse. Uh, however, obviously, there's no rumors about that. That's probably the first you're hearing it is right here. Uh, but I do think Atlanta, with their improvements, uh, bringing in Bogdanovich, obviously Trey Young is there. Uh, and John Collins is a guy that would be movable in that move uh, to bring in Giannis. And I think that's something to watch, actually. So now at this point, you're looking at the Lakers, Mavericks, Heat, Clippers, Hawks. Raptors and Bucks are all in the conversation here for Giannis Antetokounmpo. And when he comes out and says something like this, it makes me a little bit more critical uh, of his likelihood staying in Milwaukee and finishing his career as a Milwaukee Buck. Obviously, this is something we saw Kareem Abdul-Jabbar do uh, when he got out of Milwaukee. He asked for a trade out. Uh, that was 46 years ago, and they haven't been to the NBA Finals for 46 years. You're looking at something that is potentially league altering and franchise altering for the Milwaukee Bucks uh, and could definitely turn some of these other teams into dynasties. You're looking at the Lakers, you'd have a 26, 27 year old combination of Giannis Antetokounmpo and Anthony Davis for the next, I don't know, six to seven years. That doesn't seem any like anything fun for the league to deal with. Uh, looking at the Mavericks, you could have a 22 year old Luka Doncic with a 26 year old Giannis Antetokounmpo. That seems like an absolute nightmare. I think they're fit together alongside Kristaps Porzingis, which is possible in their pathway, uh, could possibly be the best team we've ever seen, actually, when it comes to uh, fit, defensive presence. You have two absolute rim protectors in Giannis and Kristaps Porzingis. You've got elite size, really great shooting ability out on the perimeter still. Uh, and defensively, you're going to be switchable. Giannis is going to really elevate that team on that end of the floor. Uh, and even Miami, you know, a team that, the fit offensively is a little bit more bulky, especially with the fact that they're going to have to give up Tyler Hero again. We referenced that in the other video. But that's something to definitely watch for. Uh, and Giannis in, my, in Miami would make a lot of sense uh, in terms of marketing himself a little bit more uh, and competing. You're looking at a team that just made the NBA Finals, in, uh, adding one of the top 10 players in the world, and really getting – a lot more competitive. And the East, uh, I don't know, even the Nets, I forgot to mention the Nets the second time around, are going to be vying for Giannis Antetokounmpo. And when he comes out and says something like this, he also mentioned in this interview uh, his admiration for Kobe Bryant, another Laker element that he had mentioned. I had been really skeptical of his ability to go out to the Los Angeles Lakers. I didn't think that was going to be in his nature or in his character. But quotes like these here make me a little more fearful for the Milwaukee Bucks, about the Los Angeles Lakers, come free agency. And I'm going to say it, if Giannis Antetokounmpo does not re-sign before December 21st, 
the day that is the final day he can ink his Supermax extension, I would be extremely fearful if I was the Milwaukee Bucks. I put all my chips on the table for Drew Holiday. I went out, paid uh, a big price. I'm talking near superstar level package to get Drew Holiday, a player that quite frankly doesn't lead teams to the playoffs. He's a really good piece though. And he's going to make the Milwaukee Bucks better. But if you traded everything that you did for Drew Holiday, including pick swaps, three first round picks, and uh, a, an asset in Eric Bledsoe, albeit some you know playoff failures, he's still a valuable player in the NBA. You gave all that up for Giannis Antetokounmpo uh, to stick around, and he still doesn't. You could be looking at a really, really disastrous end there in Milwaukee for both their general manager. Mike Budenholzer would have issues putting together that offense. And quite frankly, they would have a lot of issues moving forward. Uh, and it all stems off of one decision by one player at this point. Giannis has a huge decision. The fate of the league really sticks in his hands at this point. And if he decides to leave, the league is going to change. Uh, it'll be interesting to kind of follow over the next 12 months where he ends up going. Actually, it's less than that now. It's probably about seven months, really, uh, to kind of monitor where he goes, where he ends up, uh, how the season plays out for Milwaukee. Obviously, if he doesn't extend before the season, he still can after the season, uh, once free agency opens. But if Milwaukee doesn't at least make it to the finals, do I think he's staying? No, I do not. I really find it difficult to see him sticking around in Milwaukee if he doesn't make the NBA finals. Obviously, this is something uh, that's a little bit more difficult to now, too. We have a healthy Kevin Durant out east. Uh, the uh, Indiana Pacers uh, didn't get worse, that's for sure. The Boston Celtics did lose Gordon Hayward, but they're still a competitive team. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers have addressed some of their shooting needs. They're going to be a little bit more competitive this year. Uh, and we're looking at a lot of other teams out east. You know, Toronto Raptors are still going to be a really good team. So there's a lot of pressure on this Milwaukee Bucks roster and this, uh, the coaching staff, Mike Boonholzer, to make adjustments come playoff time uh, and to get Giannis into his first NBA Finals appearance. Otherwise, he's probably out the door if he doesn't ink that Supermax extension. And an important thing to note, if he does ink the Supermax extension at any point, he could you know, have a little bit of a wink-wink agreement with management that says, if I want out at some point, you guys are going to make that happen. Otherwise, I could really create an ugly situation here in Milwaukee, something you guys aren't going to want. I don't want that for Giannis. So now you're looking at an interesting situation that could play out between Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, and really, everything lies on this season. If the Milwaukee Bucks go 70 and, uh, or in a 72 game season, say they go 60 and 12, that might not be enough to keep Giannis around if they don't make the finals. If they go 65 and 7, it still might not be enough. You're looking at a team that's going to put all their chips in when it comes to playoff time. You can see them even make a, a few aggressive moves on the buyout market this year. Maybe one move at the deadline uh, with the rest of their chips, which could even get even scarier for them. They could have almost no future assets. They could hit the bottom of the barrel uh, pretty quickly. So now we're looking at a, a pretty dangerous route, uh, but something they had to do to, to convince Giannis that they're going to try and win. Uh, and hopefully for their sake, they do. Otherwise, they could be in a world of hurt. But at this point, that'll conclude the video. I just want to remind everyone to subscribe if you are new to Utility Sports. We're growing rather quickly, and we don't want you to miss out uh, on all the fun here as we continue to pump out videos. Uh, we do have another one on, up on our channel from today. That's an NFL draft quarterback analysis from breakdown on the top five guys in this year's class. So make sure to go hit that video up and uh, leave a like as well. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.